Hello, everyone. Welcome to the May Lunch with DARPA webinar. We are talking today about camping in the Dan River Basin. My name is Krista Hodges, and I'm the Education Manager. We also have a guest speaker joining us today, Ernie Shepard. He is a uh, Philpott Lake Ranger. He's been there for many, many years, and he's going to talk to you guys a little bit later today in the end of the webinar. So if you're not familiar with the Dan River Basin, I'm going to give you guys um, an overview of the Dan River Basin here in just a minute. And then we will talk about different types of camping that you can do in the basin. I will give you some camping tips and then also some places to stay in the basin. I have an exciting uh, list of places that you can choose from to stay in the basin. And then things to do while you're camping. We'll talk about places to hike in the basin and then places to paddle in the basin. And then, like I said, at the very end, we'll save some fun um, stories and interesting stories and advice from Ernie Shepard um, at the end of the webinar. And then we will save questions and answers for last. So just to let you guys know, the um, video, of course, is all for participants. This webinar is being recorded. It will also be available on our Facebook page. It will be available on our website. If you go to um, our webinars page on danriver.org, you can find the recordings there. It will also be on YouTube. And then we will send it out, hopefully, in our e-newsletter as a recording. So thank you all for coming. We're very excited to have you here today. So the mission of the Dan River Basin is to preserve and promote the natural and cultural resources of the Dan River Basin through stewardship, recreation, and education. So you can see in the map there, we cover a wide range of area. It's 3,300 square miles, and that's 16 counties between Virginia and North Carolina. So anywhere that the Dan River flows, that is where our basin covers. And so we do our programs through stewardship, recreation, and education focuses. Stewardship covers water quality, monitoring, planting trees, just anything to get um, our members and volunteers out to protect the resources. And then also recreation is getting people outdoors. That can be through canoeing and kayaking, also hiking. And then education programs. We have some wonderful education programs that we have done for many years now throughout the basin for children of all ages, also adults. We, have, we do festivals. So we have a lot of fun stuff going on with DARVA. So you might wonder if you're thinking about the Virginia, like the major watersheds, what major watershed are we in in Virginia? Well, we are in the Dan River Basin is in the Roanoke River watershed. And so you can see there, the Roanoke River watershed is very large, covers a wide range of area, but the Dan River Basin falls right into the middle of that. And then if you're wondering, you know, where does our water flow to if we're in the Roanoke River watershed or the Dan River Basin? Well, it flows down into the North Carolina Albemarle Sound, um, which is, you know, it flows into the Atlantic Ocean. So what exactly are the types of camping that we're going to talk about today? So if you guys, I'm sure there are some people out there that are watching this that have probably been camping before. Maybe you're watching this to see what kind of options are available in the basin. And then also maybe there are some new people out there that have never been camping before and just want to see what types of camping, you know, can, can they do maybe with their family or as individuals in the basin. So let's talk about what kinds of options are available. So you have tent camping, which is basically like if you want to go to the basics of camping, Primitive camping is your option. Like that's, you know, they also consider that like backwoods ca uh, camping. So that basically is when you go camping without any kind of amenities. So, or very little amenities. You might only have like, um, like a little bit of running water or like a community center for running water. So you might have like a community spigot or something like that for running water. And then as for a restroom, you might have like an outhouse or 
Um, you might even have to use the restroom outside, like in the woods. And so that's true, like back country camping. So that's, there aren't a lot of options like that available in the Dan River Basin, but we will talk a little bit about primitive camping in more detail in just a minute. Then you also have campgrounds, which are, you know, you can do those at the state, federal, or privately owned levels. And when I share a list of camping options with you guys, we will have all of those options available on that list. Now, if you're the type of person that needs more than a tent, then there are tons of options out there for you. You know, maybe you just want something a little bit more comfortable, you know, than sleeping in just a tent out in the woods. And that is completely understandable. So we have hammocks, you know, those are pretty basic. Um, that would almost fall in the lines of like primitive camping. And then you also have campers, which are includes like RVs, pop-ups and trailers. And then uh, cabins and lodges. So those are, you know, favorites most often for like families and stuff along with campers. And then yurts, so that yurts will be a step above um, tent camping. And then you also have Airbnbs and glamping. So a lot of people are getting into glamping these days. And that is really like your most, you know, upscale type of camping. So primitive camping, like I said, is considered backcountry camping. Like that is going out there and you don't have much with you. It's camping without amenities such, such as restrooms, running water, or electricity, or having just very few of those available to you. So you can go to some places without reservations if you're doing primitive camping, but most often you're going to need reservations for the places that we're talking about. There are a few primitive camping options available. Most often people prefer having the amenities to make their camping experience the most comfortable and that's okay. Some primitive sites are available at Philpot Lake, including Deer Island and Salthouse Branch. Like I said, you will need to make reservations at those places. Previously, uh, up until this year, Deer Island was first come, first serve, but with all of the changes that happened when the pandemic started, those people went to going like recreation all the way because it was something that you could do outside. You know, you wouldn't have to be around a lot of people. You could social distance. So a lot of people turn to camping and most of our, even our um, hiking trails, you know, canoes and kayaks were bought up in shops, bicycles were bought up. So a lot of people are, in there, are enjoying recreational opportunities now um, with the pandemic. And even though things are calming down, they're still enjoying these resources. So for tents, you might think, well, if you're looking for a tent, what options are out there? And there are so many options available as far as tents go. There are lodge tents, um, single person tents, you know, two to four, four person tents. And you can get on up there, those lodge tents are like 12 person tents. So very large tents, you can definitely check those out and they are cheaper than an RV. So if you're just getting into camping, you don't wanna spend a whole lot of money, a tent might be the way to go. You can take care of them, and as long as you take care of them, they will last many years. You can also buy a single person option to family lodges, like I was saying. And then if you wanna make your tent experience just a little bit more comfortable, you can always buy an air mattress. You can get those you know, at places just like Walmart. Or you can always look at more expensive places like REI or something like that. But again, you know, the, a lot of times with um, quality, if you pay a little bit more for something, it might last a little bit longer. So what other kinds of camping are available? So like I said, there's a lot of choices in the Dan River Basin that can be available to you. You just pick what works for you. So if you need something more than a tent, like I said, you can get an RV. These pictures are of different types of RVs. You can get something, this one right here is called a teardrop trailer up in the right-hand corner. You got all of your, um, like you have enough kitchen amenities with that one. You've got a bed inside of there. So this is a good option for like one or two people, like a couple maybe that doesn't have children that just wanna go do some traveling and make it um, as simple as possible. 
down here in the bottom right hand corner this is a more expensive rv camper it's called an airstream camper but it is a very nice camper and as long as you take care of it it will last a very long time then you see down here in the left hand bottom picture is something that's called a cricket camper and these are a type of a pop-up camper that are you know in the mid range for pricing then in the top left hand corner these are yurts so we actually do have a yurt um, camping option available in the basin and that's at fairy stone state park so basically yurts are a step above a tent option so if you're looking at doing something like that one to, one thing to keep in mind is that you can't take your pet if you go to stay in one at fairy stone you can't take your pet into a yurt so that's just so they can help take care of it for longer. And then this middle option here, this is, you know, these are the cabins that are available at Ferry Stone State Park. There are other cabins that are available throughout the basin, but this is just like staying in like a small house, um, you know, while you're camping. They're wonderful options. The cabins are really, really nice. Um, that's one thing that we do with our family and we love staying there at Ferry Stone. So what are some tips for camping? You know, you might think you're just getting into camping. What do I need to know? What are some basic tips that can help me have a really great experience? So I would recommend always take rain gear. So you never go wrong with rain gear because even if they say, like if you're looking at the forecast for the weather before you go, even if they say no rain, you still might get a pop-up thunderstorm in the summertime, especially if you're you know, near water or something like that. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. It never hurts to have your rain gear with you. And usually those are pretty light items. You can pack them up pretty small. For wherever you're going camping, always be sure to check the rules. You don't wanna get out there and you know accidentally disobey a rule because you didn't know what it was and that you know, completely mess up your camping experience. So always check the rules for where you're going camping before you go. If you pack it in, always pack it out. You know, anything that you're taking in with you, but don't leave it behind, no litter or anything like that. Make sure you take it out with you. So that way we can keep these places as nice as possible for ourselves and for others to enjoy next time. Before taking children camping, I would recommend, you know, this might be even a fun experience if you're just getting into camping, try it out in your yard, maybe in your backyard, just to get them introduced to camping. And it can really give you an idea of what else you might need if you're just getting into it. Take cards, board games, or books when you go camping. Really just decide what kind of camping experience you want. Maybe you want something just really laid back and relaxing. You can take board games and books and just relax through your camping experience. Always sleep with the same number of pillows as you do at home. It might sound silly, but you don't wanna get somewhere and just have one pillow if you're used to sleeping with two or three pillows. You wanna be just as comfortable as you are at home when you go camping. Put together a camping kit and a plastic tote that includes anything such as first aid items, insect repellent, flashlights, you know, maybe lighters or matches or something like that, that you're gonna need, you know, the necessities for when you go camping. Because if you don't have those items, you know, you're definitely not gonna have a good experience. So if you take this tote, this plastic tote and dedicate it to, you know, those items that I mentioned, they will always be in that tote and you can just grab the tote anytime you're ready to go camping and you have everything together for you. Now. For the flashlight, definitely take, you know, extra batteries. But one thing important about that that I want to mention is that when you go camping, if you use anything out of that plastic tote, always make sure you replace it as soon as you get home. And that way, next time you go camping, it's ready for you. And you don't have to wonder, did I, you know, put this in there or does it have it in there? You know what's in there. You know it's ready for you to go the next time you go camping. If you're using a cooler, reuse your empty milk jugs by filling halfway with water and freeze to keep your food cold longer. So if you're using a cooler, you know, if you're staying for several days, your food might start getting kind of warm. So take those empty milk jugs that you're no longer using 
And like I said, clean them out, fill them halfway with water, freeze them and put them in your cooler along with your food. And that way they stay cold. Your food stay cold, stays cold for a long time. Turn off your technology. So anytime you go in nature, this is an opportunity for you to reconnect with nature. It's a wonderful experience. You can reset your clock. You can just be peaceful in nature. It's good for your mind. It's good for your body. So just turn off that technology. You know, if you're just hanging out at your campsite, turn it off and just relax. Also, a little funny one I thought you guys might enjoy. If you're going tent camping, don't forget the tent, right? We don't want to get out there and have to go back home because you didn't bring your tent with you. So places to stay in the basin. So like I said, I'm excited. We've never offered um, this list of opportunities, list of places for you to stay in the basin before. So I would like to show you that um, this list includes RV um, parks, you know, campgrounds, state and federal parks, and private campgrounds. So let's take a look at that and see what kind of places we have available in the basin. So this list, if you're looking for this list, you can go to our website, danriver.org, and you can go to the tab that says visit the DRB. And this list is included in there. You can download this list. All of these um, names are clickable, they're hyperlinked. So it'll take you to the website for each place that's mentioned. So you can see we have options that are available both in Virginia and North Carolina. So Ferrystone State Park, Philpott Lake has many um, campgrounds. Um, Philpott Lake, one of the campgrounds called the Group Camping Area is owned by Henry County Parks and Rec. So if you want to reserve that one, make sure you go to their website. Jamison Mill Park is now owned by Franklin County Parks and Recreation, but they still have camping options available. That park was previously owned by Philpott Lake. Um, there are two new um, or newer RV parks in Henry County and Martinsville. And one of those is the Lily Pad RV Park. That one's brand new. It's available in Henry County, kind of in the Bassett area. And then also the Hin Indian Heritage RV Park. That one's been around for several years, but that one is right along the Smith River. Wonderful place to stay. There's always people camping there. And then Stanton, Stanton River State, State Park, um, that one's in Scottsburg, Virginia. And then Okanichi State Park, Paradise Lake and Campground, that's a private campground in Keelan. Lake Reedsville, that's in North Carolina. Dan River Campground is a private park. Mayor River State Park, Hanging Rock State Park, and Moore Spring Campground in Stokes, that's a private campground. Jomeo Key um, Campground, that's a private one, and then also Heiko Lake Campground in Leesburg, North Carolina. So you can check those out. Lots of nice places to stay. And like I said, it's a, you know, it's a full list of state places, federal places, and um, private campgrounds. So this is not a comprehensive list. We would love to add more places to this. If you know of places, more additional places to stay in the Dan River Basin, email us, reach out to us, and we can definitely add those to this list. All right, so things to do while camping. You might think, you know, if you're just getting into this, what's something that I can do while I'm camping? Well, again, I, like I said earlier, it depends on the type of camping that you want to do. Maybe you just want to get out there and rest and relax the whole time and just kind of have your feet up. Maybe you want to spend some family time. You can read books and play games. Um, something great to do. I think like some of these things are things that things that I think you need to do regardless of when you go camping. Like it's these things make a camping experience. So swimming at a beach area at one of the campgrounds is always great in the summertime. It helps cool you off especially if you are tent camping and you don't have air conditioner available. Paddling, so if you're new, um, you can always take like, you know, if you wanna purchase a kayak or a canoe or something like that, you can go out and purchase one and take that with you when you go camping. But there are also some um, places that you can rent canoes and kayaks from in the basin. And then also hiking, 
campfire and s'mores. I always think if you take children with you, you have to do s'mores when you go camping and have a campfire, right? So when you wake up in the morning and you're doing like breakfast or something like that, a campfire is always great to keep you warm while you're cooking breakfast. But definitely like when you get up and you start fixing breakfast, like you can smell, you know, other people cooking breakfast and fixing like bacon and eggs and things like that. So definitely like have your campfire going to stay warm while you're doing breakfast because sometimes those mornings can be kind of chilly, but also like be out there, you know, cooking on the grill or something like that. Like it just makes the experience when you go camping. And then fishing, you know, if you're just learning about that, you definitely got to have your license when you go fishing, but you can fish just about anywhere that you go camping. Most often there's a water source available for you to go fishing. You just have to have your Virginia or North Carolina license when you go. And then a cookout, you know, like I said, there are certain things you got to do. And most people have like hot dogs or hamburgers or grill out vegetables or corn or, you know, pineapple on the grill or something like that. So definitely think about this list when you go camping. Definitely will add to your camping experience. So trails in the basin. If you're new to the Dan River Basin, you're, you're watching this red, um, webinar just trying to learn you know, what's available in the basin. We have a wonderful list of trails um, that you can hike in the Danover Basin that are available for all types of skill levels and abilities. So many of the parks in the, in the basin have trail, system that, trail systems that are already there. And so like Philpot Lake has wonderful trails. Um, Jamison Mill has wonderful trails. Ferrystone State Park is also an option for trails. So just check it out. I'm also going to share with you guys our interactive map that has a bunch of trail options um, for you to, you know, you can click on and learn about them. So I'll show you that in just a second. But some of the trails have hiking, biking, and mountain bike trail options. Um, this trail that I'm showing here in the picture is the Dick and Willie in Martinsville. They have the bike barn there that you can actually rent bikes from and ride on the trail. So let's take a look now at the interactive map and see what trails are available in the basin. All right, so you can go to our website and you can click on, um, let's see, programs here and under recreation, you have our interactive map. So if you check this out, um, you can zoom in on these, but you can scroll around, kind of pan around on this and just click on it. If you see the little person that looks like they're hiking, you can click on that and find trails that are available in the basin. And it'll tell you the address and then some information about the trail. So like I said, there are lots of opportunities here throughout the basin. Virginia and North Carolina has wonderful trail systems. So you can see we got one way up here. Um, that's at Booker T. Washington. So lots of opportunities for you down here, all the way in North Carolina, Hall River State Park. So just check these out when you get a chance. This is not a comprehensive list of um, hiking places and places to visit, but anytime you want to add something here, just send us an email or reach out to us and recommend it to us, provide the um, information, and we will add that to the map. Okay, so places to paddle in the basin. Like I said, if you're looking, you know, if you're just new to the um, Danover Basin and you're looking for places to go paddling or maybe you haven't been paddling before and you've been in the basin for a long time and you're just learning, you're wanting to learn more about what we have here, then you can go to our um, first Saturday outings page on our website. In the summer months, we do paddling opportunities. And then in the winter months, like fall, cool months, um, we do hiking. So you can go to First Saturday Outings, you can sign up for our e-newsletter and get the information about our outings every single month. So the June First Saturday Outing, which is coming up on June 5th, let's take a look at that. So that one is actually going to be at Philpot Lake. And so it's gonna be a nice flat water paddle for you if you're not used to paddling. This is a great option for you. So June 5th, 
from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Darwin Paddle, Spokot Lake. So um, it's a three and a half mile round trip paddle on the lake on the Franklin County side from Twin Ridge Recreation Area to Deer Island. So like I was telling you, Deer Island is one of the opportunities that you could go to if you were looking to do some primitive camping. And like I said, you do need to make reservations there, but maybe you can pack up your bag, you know, to go camp and stay out on the island. But, you know, of course you have to paddle to get there. And let's see, participants will meet at 9 a.m. There's the information there. Robin Davis, who is a former DARPA board member, will be the coordinator for the paddle. So if you want to check that out and learn more about that, you can go to our website. We do post our first Saturday outings under our events calendar on our website. All right, so, and like I said, so these options for the first Saturday outings, you can come with your family and, um, you know, you can be just yourself, single person, a couple, or you can bring your children and do these outings. So anybody is welcome. Even if you're not a member of DARBA, you can come to this outing and learn more about what we do. So, all right, so I'm excited now to offer you guys um, advice from a ranger. We're gonna talk more about, you know, some of the camping stories that he's had or some of the experiences that, that he's had at Philpott Lake since he's been out there for many, many years. So let's get back to that right now. Well, I, I want to thank Krista for have, having me here today to come in and talk to you uh, on camping. Uh, of course, I'm in the campgrounds every day uh, in every season. And for different seasons, you'll need different things to go camping. Now, at Philpot Lake, uh, we have several different campgrounds that you can uh, make reservations. Uh, or you can go on and check to see if there's anything available. And you go to the website, www.recreation.gov. And then you'll go into the uh, fill pot icon and then uh, pick the particular campgrounds you might like. Now we have, um, and I've brought some brochures here and you probably can't see them uh, too well from that, I don't think can um, probably our most popular campground is in Patrick County and that's Goose Point. And you can get to that off of Route 57 west of Bassett. And um, it's, it's the latest updated uh, one back in 2005. So it's been a little while and they keep making campers RVs larger and larger so uh, I noticed Krista was talking about the different types of um, camping equipment you can buy and you're limited sometimes if you like buy a 40-foot RV and a lot of the campgrounds have not been updated so there's a possibility that that 40-foot camper will not fit into the particular site that you want. Uh, if you go into the website for Goose Point or Horseshoe or Salt House, um, they will tell you uh, what RV will fit on that site. Now, most of, all of them will take, you know, a tent of mostly any size, but a 40 foot RV, you're, you're getting on up there and then you put a uh, 20, four foot pickup that pulls it and then you probably have your boat so uh, sometimes the equipment is more than will fit the uh, impact site or where you're supposed to put your RV and tent and all and sometimes you have to park that equipment away a little ways away so keep that in mind um, 
Also on the uh, www.recreation.gov, if you go in there, there's there's a comment section in there and it rates the um, campground. People put in their comments as to what's good and what's bad about it. And I go into that every so often and look and there's good information for us as management. Uh, we can see what's working and what's not working. So if you do that and you go camping with us, please comment on your stay, whether it's good or bad, we wanna know all of that. And the other campground that uh, Krista mentioned was that uh, Deer Island. And Deer Island this year, well, we started toward the uh, middle of last year when the pandemic uh, struck to require making um, reservations there. And it's unbelievable how popular that island has become since the pa pandemic uh, started. Uh, it's a lot of camping going on that island. And as she was telling you, it's semi-primitive. So you do have water and you do have um, toilet facilities there in Porta Johns. But, uh, you know, it's a niche that every, everybody might not be interested in. And I know that not everybody is, but you try to provide a niche for all our customers, some like that, some like tent camping, some like RV camping. And uh, our numbers are up unbelievably. And I was talking to uh, one of the local RV places here uh, right before this season started. And he said that he had no used campers and he was waiting for back orders on new ones. So, you know, it's a good way to get out uh, with your family and uh, enjoy the outdoors. You can do your social distancing, even though the restrictions uh, are easing up. It's personal, you know, whether you wanna wear a mask or not. We're not requiring it anymore if you go camping. Um, so that's that was uh, sort of a holdback for some people. So this year I'm looking for the camping to be even greater than it was last year. And last year was unbelievable. And we appreciate the people coming out. Uh, it was getting kind of lonely around there till till uh, they lifted some of the restrictions. And I was also, um, if you're up near our visitor center, this year we've started something new. We have a uh, radio station 89.3 and you have to be close to the visitor center to pick this up. And it will list the events that are going on at uh, Philpot Lake. And we update that usually each week. So, Right now, you have to be near the visitor center. We're trying to work up and get a booster so it'll go out a little bit farther, probably out to Route 57 or maybe even a little further than that. Um, when Krista asked me to do this program, she said maybe I could tell some stories that, that has occurred since I've been a ranger up there. And I've been a ranger since 1997 at Philpot. And then I was a ranger at Ferry Stone for 14 summers before that. So I've worked for the state and I've worked for the federal and, uh, and we work together, Ferry Stone and Philpot work together now. You know, and they have new management, which is really working out well. But anyway, back to the stories, the, the main part or main policy for the U.S. Army Corps engineers is water safety. Now, Philpot Dam was built to uh, reduce flooding. There used to be a lot of flooding uh, prior to the dam being built. 
And in that process, you know, you have a power plant, you can produce hydropower, but also there's a third advantage when you build a dam. And in our case uh, was Philpot Lake. And we have about 3000 acres of water and a hundred mile shoreline. And it's good for uh, power boats. Um, your kayaking especially has become so popular now. So we have a gym up there and the, a recreation gym. A lot of people don't know about it. Sometimes I have people from Martinsville who come, just happen to come up maybe for a, uh, to meet somebody up there for a picnic. And they tell us they've never been up there before. And uh, that's happened more than once for sure. Getting back to my little uh, stories uh, and water safety, as I told you, is our priority where we want everybody to be safe when they come to Philpot Lake. And we want them to have a great time and be able to go home that night or if they're going to camp, you know, camp with us. But water safety is our primary uh, concern. And I do some water safety programs down on the beaches sometimes. And I was at, uh, I believe this was Bowens Creek. And I was out there talking to some kindergartners and first graders and a little older. And I asked a little kindergartner what you should always wear when you go swimming. And of course, I was looking for the answer of a personal flotation device or what you may know as a life jacket. And she said, she thought for a pretty good while and then she said, a bathing suit. So yes, we'd like for you to wear your bathing suits and your life jackets, please. Also, uh, Rangers are supposed to be pretty smart and some of them are. Uh, one day we were on patrol out on the lake and we had to uh, go over to one of the islands. So we tied up to a tree and got off the boat and went up on the island to do whatever we were gonna have to do. And we were headed back to the boat and we got back and the boat wasn't there. And we look around and we look out in the lake and about maybe uh, 50 yards out, our patrol boat was out there floating. So of course we had to jump in and uh, swim out to it and bring it back. So if you, if you come boating at Philpot Lake, please learn your knots. Uh, how to tie knots and make sure that they are correct because you might have to take a swim. But if you do have to take a swim, have your life jacket on. That's a re requirement that all rangers have to, anytime they're near the water, have to wear a life jacket. Uh, another incident, we got a frantic call from uh, somebody out on the lake that their boat had stalled out and they couldn't get it started. and if we have the uh, personnel there to go out and help, we, we normally do. Uh, sometimes it may take an hour or more, but we either come and help you out or we contact the conservation police officers, which you probably remember, they used to be called the game wards. And uh, one of us will try to help you, or if you can wave down a somebody that's uh, passing by in a boat, they are required to stop and help you. Uh, a lot of times they will, and a lot of times they won't, but that's a courtesy. So um, we, we go and get the boat out of the boathouse and it's cold, extremely cold weather. And uh, we get out there toward Twin Ridge and we see the people waving us down. So we go over and talk to them. And what it ended up being was a remote control, radio controlled little boat about this big. So we had, we fetched that for them. 
normally had we known that we probably wouldn't have come out because um you know we come out for emergencies so that wasn't an emergency it may have been to them but it wasn't considered by us to be an emergency and then one other incident i'll tell you some of the good things and then uh this is for you kayakers or canoeists uh this was back in March, uh, several years back, I was working um, and it, it was, the day had started out sunny and warm and reasonably warm for March. And later on in the day, I get a call out of North Carolina that there's a couple of canoeist miss. Well, they weren't missing on the lake, but they were lost on the lake. And they had called by cell phone to their father in North Carolina uh, to help them out because their canoe had turned over. They were wet. Um, just luckily that, you know, it didn't mess their cell phone up and they were able to call out. Uh, during this time, as I got the patrol boat out and contacted the game wardens. Um, during this time, a freak little snowstorm came up and the temperature dropped dramatically, probably 20 degrees within an hour. So these people were out wet, lost, and needing help. So by the time we did locate them, one of them had started hypothermia. His body temperature had dropped so much when I questioned him, he couldn't answer. You couldn't understand his uh, responses. So he spent the night in the hospital, but he was okay after that. The other one was okay. So if you go out, be sure to take uh, the equipment, such as a cell phone, uh, be sure you have that. Also uh, do a float plan as we call it, let somebody know where you're going and that you, uh, when you intend to come back and those types of information will help us reach you in case of emergency. Uh, also, if you're, when you're out camping and a lot of campers like to go out hiking, and you need to carry those types of things with you also, a phone and a kind of a plan, let somebody know where you're going. It's always best to go with somebody, have a partner. But if you do get lost, the best thing to do is to sit down and stay put um, because the farther you go out, the more lost you become and the harder for us to come and find you. So we want you to come camping. I think I've covered what I wanted to, except um, the passes that you can purchase. We've, we've started a new ticket fee machine at Bowens Creek and also at Ramp 1. So if you come into Ramp 1 to put your boat in, you used to put your money, your cash or check into the honor vault but now we have a uh, machine a ticket machine a fee machine that you use your debit card or your credit card just put it in and it will print you out a voucher now you can all that's day use five dollars but we also have the core annual pass for forty dollars you can get that there also and you have 10 days to bring that up either to our office or to one of the gate houses at the campgrounds to trade that in for a permanent pass. So that's something new. Keep that in mind if you're coming out to visit. Um, we look forward to having you. We look forward to a great year. And I wanted to read you just uh, a statistic that was updated. Almost lost it here, excuse me. Um, that was updated May 24th, and it's, uh, it's 
important that you realize what can happen when you're out on the lake. We don't want to scare you, but we want you to wear that life jacket. And it, I'm just going to read it verbatim. Over the past 23 years, there have been 792 drowning-related fatalities in the South Atlantic Division, which Phil Pot is in, the uh, southern states, Atlantic states. <coughs> Um, 60 percent were between the ages of 21 to 60 and 92 percent, this is very important, 92 percent were not wearing their life jackets. Mm -hmm. Now last year there were 32 drowning fatalities, which is also the five-year average for South Atlantic Division. As of the 24th of May, uh, in the South Atlantic Division, we've already had nine drowned. And most of the time, like they said, about 93% were not wearing their life jackets. Had they been wearing their life jackets, uh, more than likely they would have survived. So if you're going out fishing or going out swimming, just be sure to put that life jacket on. Uh, be safe, and we welcome you to the area and all these other campgrounds that uh, have been listed on this website there. Um, you know, give them some business too. We're, we're swamped and, and we can handle what comes, but uh, eventually, you know, there's, the camping is so popular now is for reasons I've already said, um, if you spread out your business to others, it helps them too. And we want to help our local businesses and happy camping. All right, Ernie, thank you so much for all of that wonderful information. Uh, that was a lot of really good advice. Um, I hope people follow that so that way they can have the best camping experience as possible. So um, I wanna go ahead and we are wrapping it up, like I said, um, at the end of the webinar here. So now I have a couple of polls. Hopefully I can get them to work if you are on the webinar. All right, so if we can't get it to work, what I want you to do is comment in the chat box so they don't see the polls coming up. So I have two questions for you if you are on this webinar. So what type of camping do you prefer? So we listed a lot of camping options, um, you know, tent camping, RV camping, maybe yurts, cabins, something like that. Can you put it in the chat box? What type of camping you prefer? So I actually prefer, I like to do tent camping and I like to also do cabin, like staying in cabin. So those are my favorite. Um, so we said we've got a um, participant here that said they like to go tent camping. You can get more places than if you have a big rig. That is exactly right. Yes. What about you, Ernie? What kind of camping do you like? Um, well, I was a Boy Scout. Um, I did all the tent camping that I desired to do, which was a great experience, you know, as, as a young person uh, growing up. And the scouting was a great experience. Mm -hmm. um, then I moved up to the, um, actually to a big tent, a family-sized tent. Uh, then I moved up into a pop-up. Mm -hmm which I, I really liked to pop up. It was easy to haul mm -hmm. and, uh, or to tow. And then I moved up to the larger. I have a 27 foot one now, and we'll be camping this weekend up at the Henry County group area. So uh, that's good too. It's, uh, I could go back to the others. And yeah. It wouldn't bother me at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. So I definitely like tent camping as well. I think it's good to get the children out there to do that. The other question I wanted to ask is Do you plan 
to go camping this summer. Like Ernie said, you know, if you guys, I don't know if anyone has noticed, but recreational um, equipment and recreational, like staying in campgrounds and stuff like that have been at a, like a very high level um, since the pandemic started. Last year, you know, you could, it was like hard time finding even like bicycles or canoes or kayaks that just weren't like flying out the storage because people were buying so many of those things because that was something that they could do, you know, during the pandemic. So do you plan to go camping this summer? I am. What about you? Are you going this summer or not? You're probably working all summer long, won't you? Actually, I'm off this holiday. Okay. We get, we get one holiday off. Gotcha. Uh, during the wreck season, and I asked for this one. So I'll be, like I said, I'll be camping at the group area up in Philpott. Gotcha. All right. Awesome. So thank you guys for coming. I have enjoyed this webinar. I thought it was a lot of fun. Oh, wow. We've got one participant that says they have five trips booked so far. And one of those is including Goose Point and then Primitive Areas, National Forest or Coast Camping. We go kayaking, et cetera, during. Yes, good stuff. Awesome. So yeah, I would love to get out to like the National Forest or Coastal Camping. Definitely sounds great. All right. So we're going to wrap it up. We're going to close this out. I appreciate everyone for coming and like I said, this will be available on YouTube, on Facebook, and on our website after this actual session. So if you missed it, please feel free to um, share it with others. You know, maybe somebody might find it useful or, um, you know, helpful if they're planning to go camping. Thank you for coming, and we'll see you all next time.